is Kulkarni here. In this video, we will talk about limiting reactant and some simple, easy calculations. So, what exactly is limiting reactant? Let's find out using this example. Let's say we are making some cookies for our class. And this is the recipe for one batch of cookies. And this is what we have at our home. So how many batches we can really make and we are going to imagine that we can also make half batches. Let's figure that out. Okay, we have six eggs and let's say, let's imagine that we have everything in the world which we need to go with six eggs. How many batches we can make? Four eggs can make one batch of cookies. So six eggs can make 6 divided by 4, that will be 1.5 batches of cookies. If we continue with the same thing, we can figure out this is 5 cups of flour and 2 cups required for 1 batch. So that will make 5 divided by 2, 2.5. When we do sugar, this is 4.5 cups and this is 1.5. So when we divide that, we get 3 batches. And for butter sticks, it's two required for one batch. So with four sticks, we can make two batches. Now we got all kinds of answers. Which is the correct answer? How many really batches we can make? Out of all these, 1.5 is the lowest number. All the remaining numbers are higher. That means we can really, really make only 1.5. Five batches. That's the secret. So we can find out from every ingredient how much of the cookies or how much is the product we can make and whichever gives you the smallest answer that is your limiting reaction and that's all you can make. Is that simple? Alright. So what is the limiting reaction we found for this one? That was eggs. And which other reactants were in excess? Well, everything which we had was in excess. So we have flour, then we have sugar. And of course, then we had some butter. They will be left over. Let's look at some more problems. So how much of butter will we using really? We are going to calculate that. Let's go back to our calculation. Six eggs were going to give us 1.5 batches. Alright? Now, for butter, two sticks are required for one batch. So that means if you have 1.5 batches, amount of butter which will be used will be 1.5 times 2, which will be 3. So three sticks will be used up. How many sticks we actually have? Four. So how much will be remaining? Four minus three are used up. So one stick will be left over for the future. Well, let's look at the eggs. How many eggs will end up using? Remember what we decided. Eggs is the limiting factor. We will use every single egg. So what will be remaining? Nothing. So we will end up using all entire six eggs. All of them. How many will be remaining? Zip, zero, or none. Alright, this is interesting. One batch makes 48 cookies. However, you ate some dough while you are cooking and burn some cookies. That's me. I do that. Anyway, so what happened was, we ended up only having 55 cookies. We lost some cookies. So what will be our percent yield? Look at that. 1.5 batches is something we are supposed to make. Each batch contains 48 cookies. So that's times 48. When we do that, we end up getting 72. So ideally, we should have got 72 cookies. How many we got? We only got 55. So what's the percent yield? Percent yield is the actual yield which is 55 divided by 
the theoretical yield which is 72 that times 100 and how much is that that comes out to be 76.4 percent well at least we'll get some cookies to eat which is a good part right how do we apply this principle to real chemistry when there are more than one reactants what we do is from every reactant we go to the product to find out how much can we make the one which we which gives you the smallest amount of product is actually what we can make then which is the limiting reactant obviously it is the one which gives you the least amount of product okay now always if the question is how much of the limiting reactant is used up it will be always none because that is the one will be making use up and then how much amount of excess reactant is left over for that calculation we go from the limiting reactant and then from that we go to the other product and we find that okay how much is being used and then of course we go through subtraction like we did for butter and we find out how much is left over